You are listening to the regular version of Sexy Marriage Radio, smrnation.com. You've turned on Sexy Marriage Radio, where the best sex happens in the marriage bed. Here's your host, Dr. Corey Allen. So not to give it away completely on where we're heading today, but you know, today's episode is largely uh, all about the listeners. <laughs> yes. You know, it's totally about... Well, about one or two, if you count the couple units. Yes. Uh, but there's also, I wanted to start off with a shout out, because mm-hmm. you and I run... Um, this is Sex and Marriage Radio, by the way, as the intro should have told you. Hi, uh, Dr. Allen. <laughs> this, I'm Pam, his wife. <laughs> but uh, you and I help lead uh, a marriage ministry at our church called Reengage. Yes. And so that means anytime somebody inquires, I get those emails. Yes. And so there was somebody that had just moved into town from California a couple of weeks prior, mm-hmm. and we're checking out churches, came across, reengaged, thought, saw it, uh, inquired for some more info. I reply with the more info, and they're looking at the, the signature on my email, and they're like, email back right away and just saying, hey, this, uh, the marriage ministry sounds so great. We're, we're excited to come check it out. And by the way... We are listeners, and we love the show. We had no idea that that was you that was email, and and my wife and I are just like, that's Corey, that's Corey and Pam, that's dude, that's awesome. So we got to meet him then the next week. So excited, <laughs> so excited. We're get, gonna have him over for dinner soon. Absolutely. So <laughs> shout out to the listeners that we actually get to meet in person. Another great way to meet us and a lot of other listeners and people in the SMR Nation is to come join us at the getaway. Uh, June seventeenth through the twentieth, it's registrations open now. You can find that information mm-hmm. at smrnation dot com forward slash getaway, where you can reserve your spot. Yeah, all new, all new classes all, this time. Yeah, all new content. Content, sorry, uh, better that's word. It's going to be. Uh, I am really excited as this is starting to take shape. Yeah, it's going to be pretty nice. Uh, building off of what we've done in the past, but if you've come before, there will be enough new. There will be a vast mm-hmm. percentage of it will be new. Mm-hmm. And going different directions with it, kind of like we do with the shows kind of. here each and every week. But registration is going on now. Uh, act fast, because even with all of the unknowns, we got people coming mm-hmm. and more every day that inquire and and are checking it out. And so we want you to come join us. Personal invite from Pam and I, because we want to meet you. Come join us. Well, coming up on today's regular version of Sexy Marriage Radio, uh, this is a continuation of where we went last week in the extended content, mm-hmm. where there was an episode that or an email that came in from a husband who was intrigued, if not turned on, by his wife's sexual past. Mm-hmm. And so we went in great detail in the extended content last week. So if you missed that, you're going to want to check that out. Mm-hmm. By joining the extended, and you can do that at smrnation.com forward slash SMR Academy. Join at the level you choose. And so we went into a larger dialogue with him, and I sent him the the episode, Mm -hmm. which he then immediately replied. And so this week, he and I got on the air and had a dialogue continuing the conversation. Yeah, I love this. He had listened to it like three times and was just processing it in his brain and going through it. It's like, I, I, I've got to talk this through. Right. So we, we just do a, 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 a continued conversation mm-hmm. based on what went on last week. And in the regular version today uh, is the first part of that conversation. Such great. Info. And then in the extended content, which is deeper, longer, and there's no ads, mm-hmm. um, we continue it, but we pivot a little bit and get into the realm of self-control and desire. Mm. And what do we do with those things? Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of times we've had it wrong. I agree. On the way a lot of us have have been taught or tried to Mm -hmm. handle some Mm -hmm. of these different things that go on in our fantasy thought life and urges and impulses that we have. Right. And so uh, definitely not going to want to miss that. All that's coming up on today's show. So you said you wanted to talk just a little bit too. So what's up? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things, man, I listened to y'all's, uh, y'all's response to my question. I appreciate it so much, man. And I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I think a lot of, a lot of what you guys said resonated just because it's something that I've been praying with for quite a bit. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? But I've really just kind of sat in this place of, okay, am I crazy for having these thoughts? 
on, on one hand, there is a, there is definitely a moral dilemma there. No question about it. But on the other hand, it's like, okay, am I crazy for having these thoughts? Because these are regular. Okay. Okay. And so I'm going to give you just a little bit of a background to me. Corey, I am minister. I have worked for the church for 20 years. Okay. Uh, I've read a lot on the theology of the body of Pope John Paul II. I've done a lot of just personal intercessory prayer when it comes to all of this stuff, man. When I was 12 years old, man, I walked in on two guys that really meant the world to me uh, watching pornography. And when I walked in, I saw what they were watching and, and I was like, what the heck is that? It was one of those things is, Corey, I can still visualize that image today. And I'm sure. 41 years old sure. and I was 12 years old. And so, but what really kind of put me in like this place was the way that my uncles responded to me. And those guys meant a lot to me, you know, and, and the way that they responded to me, Corey was, was bad. I mean, I ran out of the house. I ran off into the woods just and leaned up against a tree and just cried, mm-hmm. you know? And finally my, my mom was looking for me and, and I, I came out and she was like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, nothing. And for years and years, I suppressed that, but I never forgot that image. When I was probably ninth grade, I, I was in a relationship with a girl and, and, it, and we, became very, we became very sexually active. And I just still to this day, though I've had a lot of healing from it, it doesn't go away. I still have um, struggled with those images. And up until just a few years back, I would say a few years, probably seven or eight years now, um, really kind of through healing, got, got out of pornography. Um, my wife doesn't know that my wife doesn't wasn't aware that all of that she knew that it was a problem in the past but it's one of those things she wasn't aware of the extent of it you mean even into the marriage you're talking about okay no no um because it was something that would come and go it wasn't something that was consistent it wasn't any of that you know i mean it it fell it fell under the auspices of i can handle it so i don't really need to let it all be out I can figure it out. She's not going to understand. I even got some guidance and saying, look, she doesn't understand if it was something that was ongoing regular. Yeah. But if you're really trying to okay. overcome it and battle it and so forth, it wasn't something that they felt was, uh, you know, necessary to bring into the light because again, much like I've heard y'all's conversation on, um, on the podcast, uh, it's a, it's a huge place of woundedness and, and can really cause a lot of, a lot of hurt. Uh, to her and obviously I don't want to do that but as I continue to kind of find healing and really try to overcome it I find myself fantasizing back into those places Mm -hmm. so where all of this came from my wife Christian growing up in the faith she and I met doing retreats uh, awesome person we were dealing with my my oldest daughter uh, was dating a guy and I noticed that she had a hickey on her neck and I addressed it and I was like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like really, uh, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. My wife started talking about it. She started asking me things because I had told her about my relationship with my prior, you know, with girlfriends, you know, ninth and 10th grade and so forth. But it was, it was sexually active. And I had told her that prior to us getting married just because it was heavy on my heart and I felt like I needed to do that. But she never really told me anything about hers. Hers was always, I'm still a virgin. Right. I'm still... You know, all of that. So I'm thinking she's perfect, right? So we're coming home, driving home one night, and we're talking about the issue with my oldest daughter. And she says, um, well, what was this, you know, was this something that you did? And I said, so, yeah, is it something that we did? And I said, well, I guess, but not really, you know, hickeys or anything. And I said, well, what about you? And she said, well, I guess some. And I'm like, what? And so that kind of dove in, dude. Okay. Corey, when I tell you, like, it intrigued me in that, that moment. She had done with, with her boyfriends, and she said heavy petting. I'm like, whoa, what does that even mean? Right. You know? Right. And so she started she started telling me, and then she was like, no, I don't want to tell you. I don't want to talk about it. What, what, what the? You know, like, I mean, that's just like dangling the carrot, right? I right. Mean, I'm, from that moment, so we talked a little bit. She told me some things that she had done but not anything in, in detail. So since then, I have just been kind of in this place of, I want to know. Okay. I want to know more. What's motivating that on wanting to know more? I really think, I, I've sat with that quite a bit, honestly. And I really think why I want to know more 
is because I want to know like every part of her, I think. Okay. But the way that I'm spinning it is the way that I'm spinning it is for lustful purposes. Okay. So you want to know Did that answer the question? It, it does, but you, so you're you're kind of in the conundrum because I'm hearing this, this thread of walking a line that could be steered well, but also has a chance to go off the other direction pretty easily too. Yes, right? pretty easily. Yeah. So right. there's this element of I want to know more. I want to be involved. I want to know you. But then you get caught in this dilemma, it sounds like, of do I want to know the details because there's some titillation to it and some enticement to it and some just humanness to it? Right. right or do right, I want right. to know the meanings and how you have evolved and what you have learned from your experiences, honey, and how that's made you who you are now, which is more of the right. digestion of all that we've done in our life to then become the people we are, which... That seems to right. be the conundrum you've been in as, as the way I have right. framed what you've written thus far. Right. Is right. I, right. I, I can use this for nefarious kind of fun, exciting times <laughs> for myself, or right. I could use right. this to truly know and be known. I think you hit the nail on the head because honestly, when, when, and Pam said this in the, um, in the extended version when y'all addressed it, she said, I would like to know their conversations two hours after. Okay. Right. And our conversations two hours after is we're not talking about it. Okay. We're not talking about it. That's from her so saying that. Not. And so both of us, okay. honestly, I just know that, I, you know, we just go on with life, you know, we okay. do what we do and, and we just don't talk about it. And when I try to, you know, when I try to have conversation about it, it's, it's very quick. It's very, quickly shut down and these kind of things. And I think because she knows that it is leading towards something else. Right. right. Uh, she told me a dream she had one time and I wanted to know all the details and all she wanted me to know was uh, this. I had a dream <laughs> you know? and I'm like, that drives me crazy. Right. But at the same time, I want to respect her in a place where if she wants to tell me, she'll tell me if she doesn't, you know, if she if she doesn't, then okay. Right. You know, I have to be okay with that. Right. Well, you, you seem to be the kind of guy that you fill in the gaps with arousing things, possibly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Absolutely. You could have For a sure. tend to steer it towards For the sure. sexual arousal desire, uh, you know, endorphin yes. in inducing kind of things right. when all they right. really are right. are just gaps in some regards. They're not necessarily leaning towards the sexual even. Is that possible? Yeah, that's very possible because one of the things that we have done, and this is something that we've talked about in, in the past, but listening to one of the episodes is we actually uh, have a schedule. We put, so she knows that if any conversation comes up on Monday, it's not leading to sex. Okay. Because that was one of the things that I really had kind of set out was, Anytime I try to bring it up, she doesn't do it because she thinks it's leading to sex or if I touch her or kiss her or yep. whatever, it's leading to that. And that's been really helpful, actually. It's Good. actually been joyful for both of us. And it's actually kind of funny because I'll say something to her and she said, you know, I'll ask her just being blunt. I'll ask her, you know, what color panties are you wearing today or something like that. And she'll say, I'm not telling you it's Monday. Okay. <laughs> you know? And so I'm sitting here like, oh, man, you know, OK, that's right. You're right. You're right. So it, we have fun with it, but at the same time, uh, I don't want to hurt her. I really don't. But there's just something in me that really just is is just intrigued with, yeah. and turned on. And I just don't know, like, if I need to go into counseling even, if I need to really, like, go into spiritual direction even more and just say, okay, I need to really nip this. I really have to get this under control. Okay, so two questions that come to my mind, dude. One is where, where this whole thing first started in our conversation. You talked about, I have these crazy thoughts, right? That that's, am I crazy right. with these thoughts? Uh, right. Parse that out for a second. One would be, um, I have crazy thoughts. Uh, are they crazy thoughts or is it crazy that you're turned on by these thoughts? What's the difference? I think if I were to try to say the difference is what it leads to. Because when I'm when I'm processing or when I'm thinking of these thoughts, I am turned on by them, and that leads me to want to be and act selfishly. Okay. That's okay. that's truly that's truly where it leads. Okay, but can you see the difference between the fact that you have these thoughts? Is that crazy? 
No. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's it's no, not. We can't help. We can't help all the thoughts. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there are some things also that come along in life that truly are oh, I want to know more. I you know, and it's just the question of do you how soon does that uh radar come off in the gut of like where is this heading? What's the rationale behind it? What's the meaning? That's where we've always landed with the shows, right? right? What's That's the right. meaning associated with this? So then the second question comes to um, how is the unknown that comes up with, with these kinds of thoughts based on your wife's experiences, whether she shares details or not, if you layer the theme of that over what you walked in on when you were 12, how are they similar and how are they different? I think one of the ways that they're similar is because of the way that they make me feel and the way that I have encountered pornography. And I've actually look at this in some ways as almost a play on those, um, on those experiences to where I'm, in, I'm imagining her with somebody else. I even have had thoughts of her with somebody else. And that, that really, it triggers me, not in a bad way, you know, in a good way. And, and, well, I'll say a good way. Well, you, get what I'm saying. you get turned on by it. I do. Yeah. And I mean, you know, this is where it gets into what, you know, I've heard you guys say and both talked about it as well. It gets into a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. Like, where does it stop? You know? And that's where I think that for me, I'm like, am I crazy and having these thoughts? I want to act on them just between she and I, and it go no further because I don't want to have a threesome. I don't want to have, you know, her with somebody else, but I do enjoy us yeah. you know kind of in that fantasy if you will uh doing those kind of things but is it a slippery slope to the point where we will be able to stop it from there and i don't know the answer to that well but you don't you don't have to entirely have the answer to that because this is a collaboration if you're talking about you're always wanting to steer it together because there are times i think when we get out into exploring some of these areas with our spouse where i'm exposing myself I think there can be times where my spouse is an incredibly appropriate guardrail for me. Okay. They're holding on to themselves well enough to be able to say, you can talk about this, but there ain't no way it's happening. And that lets, that right. gives you almost a little freedom, not, not permission, but freedom right. to explore your own thought life and know, okay, I'm not pushing her anywhere she's not going to go because she can stand up for herself, which mm -hmm. can then in turns kind of gives me the framework to really confront me rather than how do I get her to do what I want her to do. Right. I think that's okay. the beauty of, of two people in a, in a marriage, really sure. standing up and challenging each other, but not judging right off the bat with each other. Right. 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 That it, there's, there's right. a freedom to, you know what, honey, if that's who you want to be in your own thought life, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not okay with that. But if you want to do that in your life, I'm not around. <laughs> right? Right, right, and, right. And then right. it's kind of like, you. I'm not telling you what you can or can't do. I'm just telling you what I'm going to do. And I'll base it off of what you choose. And I think sure, right. when we can bring those things in the open, one of the things that does this tremendously beneficial is it takes away some of that deceptive power. Okay. Because when we keep things hidden, you know, this is that whole, your mom's trying to find you what's going right. on. What would have happened And this? Not don't answer this, no, but what would have right. happened? Had you said, Ma, here's, let me just tell you what I had, what happened. You know, right. now all of a sudden it's in the open and it goes down a completely different path than right. nothing, Ma. And now I've just kept it secret. That's right. And that's, that's where right. those suckers fester and they wreak all kinds of havoc, which is why pornography is so prevalent, which is why the Christian world no, does not like dabbling in the world of fantasy because it's secret <laughs> rather than right, okay, right can fantasy be healthy absolutely can fantasy be wholesome absolutely can wholesome fantasy even includes titillating things i think it can because what really matters is what do i do with it right right where do i steer right. it i think right. that's where the christian idea of taking thoughts captive comes into play of right. taking something captive to means I've incorporated some sort of action to it. Sure. So I've steered it sure. in a better direction. I've steered it sure. towards, 
something to where I've even said in my own marriage with Pam at times where I'm being bombarded right. in the spring and all the women right. have come out to bloom, quote unquote, yeah, because, absolutely. you know, when yeah, it's cold, sure. all of a sudden now they're going to wear clothes that are less covering. <laughs> and I've had times right. where it drives back and forth. I call Pam and say, baby, I am being bombarded. I, I right. can't wait to get with you tonight because <laughs> right. I want right. to steer right. it to you, you know, and right. she can easily say, well, buckle up because the bombarding is going to keep happening because I'm not interested. Or <laughs> she could say, thank you for the right. honesty. Okay. Right. Let's, let's collaborate. Let's talk about this. Let's be around, you know, because I think that's the, if nothing else, I don't want to think we have to get in caught in these areas of, I got to squash desire. Well, and I think that's one of the biggest things. I, that's what I've always done. For the most part, I'm like, nobody needs to know this part yeah. of me. Nobody needs to know this. So when I told my wife before we got married, that was huge for me. Like that was, nobody knew that. It was just she and I, that was it. Yeah. So then let me ask you the question of, since you're talking about you've had the history of this has always been something that's been hidden and at least part of the fantasy stuff has maybe come out with your wife, but you're using it rather than revealing it, right? It's almost like you're using it as a, as a mechanism towards For sure. a result rather than, let me just tell you something I struggle with. <laughs> right. right. There's that's, a different hundred percent. There's a different revealing of that. That doesn't, it, sometimes that doesn't necessarily land on a wife's, lap um as clean as maybe you're intending it but it's cleaner than let me dig in there because i get something out of this yeah right so yeah. i'm curious what would happen were you to frame it in the sense of i want to just bring part of my struggle to you a little differently not use you as part of my struggle right that, that Corey, that's a hundred percent accurate. Um, it truly is, man, because I think that part of it goes back to the pornography. Part of it goes back to the fantasy of the yep. pornography. Yep. And I use that with her and she doesn't know any of that, Yeah. you know? And, and I, I, I fear so much telling her any of this. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. Well, it's, it's incredibly revealing and there's hurt. There's no way around some of these revelations that, that will still include hurt, right? They're, they're, it's just going to have, that's, that is the whole two choice dilemma struggle of, you know, the easiest example of this would be that I want to tell you something, but don't get mad about it. I don't get right. to control the second side of that. Right. I only get to control right. the, I feel like I need to tell you something and it likely may hurt. And to me though, you, you could be in a better position if you are on the path of, I've shored up a lot of these nefarious secret things that have been in the darkness that have wreaked havoc in my life since since 12. I'm not acting out on some of these different behaviors. There really are more just in the fantasy life. And I've kind of, I haven't treated you well, honey, in this. Right. I've been a little right. disrespecting to you with the manner in which I have framed this in my own mind. And I want to clean that up. I want to bring that out in the open and realize it might set us back a little bit, but what it can actually create that we build on would actually be a whole lot more solid and more into the realm of knowing and being known better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I think that's one of the things just as I've always done and I, I know I'm repeating myself now, but that's been one of the fears that I've always had is um, really being vulnerable enough to reveal like those areas that I still struggle with and um and how she would respond to that again you know in fear of being known but also in fear of how she would respond sure um you know um, well, th this is where the whole the whole route of self-validating self-confronting uh is is starting to see where i can set the level of intimacy because the way you're framing it right now dude is yeah you're setting the level of int intimacy through the lowest common denominator meaning i'll share something that'll get us deeper but if it's scary and you react you could react bad i won't because i'm too contingent on your response absolutely versus moving towards I really want to go deeper with this. And I realize I may open myself up to some me major hurt, Yeah, but I want to set the depth. And so I'm going to, I'm going to take the risk. 
Yeah. And, and then you just give your wife some room to be compassionate. You give your wife some room to navigate where she needs to go. Cause you guys have already demonstrated just in our quick conversation, the yeah. capability of each of you to deal with some of these things and, and see your way through it. Yeah. 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 I, you know, there have been so many times where we've been, you know, laying in bed and, um, uh, or, or just in the car. Sometimes that's even uh, a better time for us. Sometimes, you know, we're not usually when we're somewhere, we're either with somebody or kids or right. what have you. And, um, you know, and when we're laying in bed, uh, I want so bad, you know, to, and, and I love how y'all say it on the, on the episode is ask better questions, Yeah, you know, have deeper, deeper meaning conversations as opposed to this and that, and, you know, what have you. And that's what I say. We have, you know, a, a really, you know, really good, uh, a great relationship. Like I love that episode where y'all talked about cherish, yeah. you know, I put that in, I put that in your, in the, in the email, and because I mean, we have a great friendship, we have a great relationship, Yeah. but this is one of those areas that she just, she doesn't know. And she doesn't ask. And I don't tell her. Yeah. And I just kind of, I just kind of frame it and go with it and just try to be, you know, um, okay. The hun- you know, my just, hunch just, is going to be that she knows she just can't put her finger on what it is that she knows. I agree with you. Okay. And so there's an element of like, you've had this tendency, it sounds like in your history to, I will hold, I will fill in unknowns into a little more of the dark side, <laughs> if you will, a little more yeah. of the sexual, if you will. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, she ha- she may have these, the tendency, which is pretty common of, I've got some things that don't add up. I've got some things that I'm curious about. I got some inklings of things, right. but I don't want to pull on that string. Cause it might go yeah. a place I do not want it to go. So therefore it's Absolutely. just easier to not even ask those questions and keep life as it is, which I can understand the rationale on why we do these things. But if you guys both are at the stance where you're saying we want to collaborate to create something better, that means you're willing to turn towards these things and take the risks and ask the harder questions, or more importantly, ask yourself the harder questions and reveal your answers to each other. Yeah. 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 You know, because all of uh, all of the are in the original email that I had sent to you guys, you know, a wife fully turned on right. was really kind of that statement. Well, right. the more that I've prayed with this and just kind of sat with this, it, it yeah, that that's true. But I think what I envision her turned on either would a be at the desire that I am, which is not a reality. Right. Secondly, would be that a lot of the things that I have seen through pornography, understanding that, you know, the, the woman's usually not the aggressor. Um, and in our case, she is not, I want her to be the aggressor. And I tell her that, you know, and it's just not in her nature. So when we're in those conversations, whether it be in the shower, I ask her probing questions and she kind of leans into it a little bit. I get kind of moved with that because just like using toys and stuff like that, it was a no, 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 no. Right. But then all of a sudden she's the one who decided she wanted to do this. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Okay. This is awesome. Yeah. You know? And so it's like, I don't want to force it, but I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like the more that we discuss and talk about it, the more comfortable she gets with it. So I never know if I'm like, okay, this is out of line. This is out of bounds. Or if, more of her just getting comfortable with it is the right way to go. And that's where I've just kind of been struggling with, you know, what that even looks like a wife, you know, fully turned on. Well, but th- this is also, this is also the dilemma though, that you, that we framed in the answer originally with you, that if you're wanting a wife fully turned on the mechanisms in which you're trying to find that isn't her. Not the right way. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's totally. it's not something that's her in those moments. And that's that that's right. that trap we get caught in. I mean, I wanted to years and years ago write an article called I'm Having an Affair. And it was it was gonna be just I was gonna set it all up like I was really kind of outing myself, right? Like all this mm-hmm. stuff has been going on behind the scenes. Nobody knew 
everything. Right. And I had talked to Pam uh, at length about this because I was going to end it all at the end of the affair I'm having is with the past memory I have of Pam, not the current Pam. Right. Wow. And that's... I'm living with that woman in my head, not the woman I live with. And that's, yeah. that's a huge struggle because we can utilize the past for good or for bad, yeah. but usually it's at the cost of the present. And you seem to be trapped in this idea of, I really want to experience my wife fully engaged in these moments, but the manner in which you're going about it, you're missing the opportunities where she might be. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I mean, I've even experienced her that way, you know, and it's yep. like, uh, I want to do that again and again. Right. But yep. how do we get back to but that? But realizing place? once you're trying to do it again, you won't. Exactly. Cause that was the past. Exactly. So exactly. instead it's how do you bring yourself forward more to be more engaged in the real time yourself, which might mean rather than asking good questions, revealing what's going on inside you right now. Yeah. See if she meets you there and see where that goes. Yeah. And even okay. the whole point of, man, I'm really Fair struggling. Enough. This is that, this is that, that fork in the road, babe, of I normally would want to go down this darker path and use this to my advantage, which is demeaning to you. And I don't want to treat you that way. I mean, that right there is also bringing you forward in that moment. It's not usually, okay. we don't usually think of that as, whoa, I'm so turned on by this now. But, but right. the difference becomes, I'm actually seeing who I'm in this moment with. I'm actually seeing who I'm in this bed or this shower with. And gotcha, yeah. that's the bigger difference because this is what I'm hearing you say. And what I'm also secondarily hearing you're saying your wife is interested in is I don't want to have sex with just the genitalia. I want to have sex with the right. brain that right. that genitalia is operated from and the body that that genitalia is attached to. I want the whole thing. Not right. just not just the moment or the piece, and right. that's bringing all of us forward in other areas of our life too to then see that play play out and to come to fruition in the bedroom or the shower in your case. Right, right, right. Yeah, and and in those moments, that's when it it's beautiful. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It's, Absolutely, it's the best. No question about it. But I settle for less. And y'all said that. Even okay. In the, well, then, even dude, in the, man to man, stop settling. I oh, know, I know, right? It's okay. like, okay, pick it up and walk with it. But yep. I, I just have to have these conversations and so much of myself has just been afraid, you know, going back to what I know that I've always done. And that is just like, yep, nobody needs to know about this yeah. part, you know? Well, um, then, then you're at a, you're at a tremendous opportunity to see where do you want to go? But okay. I'm going to tell you flat out, man, do yeah. not blame her. Right. If you don't want to take that step. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, I'm with you on that. Okay. So Pam, I love it when uh, we get a chance to carry on a conversation with listeners. We've done this a couple of mm -hmm. times in the past mm -hmm. throughout the history of SMR. Uh, it's been a long time since somebody's joined me on the air, especially to this extent. I love it because it's so impactful. You know, when we were hashing through his email last week or anybody else's for that matter, it's, it's always, well, here's how I'm hearing it. Right. Right. And so when you have the conversation and can really get more of the full story. Right. Um, I think it hits home even more with people because he's, he's totally brutally honest and putting himself out there, which is fabulous. Mm -hmm. And that just hits home with so many more people. Yeah. And if you want to hear the continuation of it, you want to miss, you want to jump into the extended content today because we keep going mm -hmm. with this conversation. So... Check that out, smrnation.com forward slash SMR Academy. We have long had a tradition for all the different people that email us at feedback at sexymarriageradio.com or call in 214-702-9565 uh -huh. uh -huh. and leave us a message about what's going on. Um, we've always loved the fact that we get to speak directly into what's going on. Yeah. Right? We get, it, we get to be invited into people's lives, into their struggles, their relationships. It's a humbling experience. Mm -hmm. But yet when we get a chance to go even deeper like we did today mm -hmm. and I get a chance to actually walk alongside, unpack, question, poke, prod, uh, challenge. Yeah. I love him answering the questions that we asked last week, right? Yep. Okay. You, you asked, what was our conversation two hours later? Helpful yep. information to know. I right? love that. How and do I you also, work? 
love the confirmation of you guys were spot on <laughs> on the way we were reading a lot of it too, right? Yeah. <laughs> that that that's if nothing else, that's confirmation for us. I think as human beings, that uh, we're not all that different. We're not. <laughs> There's a lot of things that. Man, if I'll just open up about what's going on, I can find help right around the corner or my neighbor Mm -hmm. or uh, jump on the air with us, Mm -hmm. jump on a call with me, get in my virtual office. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of help available. That's right. Well, this has been Sexy Merge Radio. If we left something undone or you got more questions or this has sparked something in your life and in your marriage, we want to know. 214-702-9565. Feedback at SexyMergeRadio.com. Wherever you are, whatever you've been doing, thanks for taking a little bit of time out of your week to spend it with us again. We'll see you next time.